You know what? You, you better start taking authority. Because you know what? That there are times I was in some of the greatest warfare when nobody did but me and Jesus. And it wouldn't have did me no good to call somebody another. I had to learn how to take authority so that I could live in peace. Because how many know that if you're born again and you say the devil coming, he's going to try to kill you. I said he's going to try. And the only way he's going to succeed is if you let him. Because he don't have no authority. He don't have no power. You know what he do? He takes your power and destroys you with it. That's right. He gets you to doubt. He gets you in unbelief. He gets you in fear. And you know what you're doing? You're killing yourself. That's all he do. He, that's why he's a trickster. Man, he, he's just, he's cunning. He's crafting. So what he do? Hey Amen. He, he, he gets you to sow negative seed. He gets you to say negative stuff. Because he know if you sow it, it's going to come back up. Doctor tell you you're sick, and, and, and you spend all day talking about, Lord, I need you to heal my high blood pressure. It's your pussy. <laughs> you claim it. <laughs> Lord, they say I got this. They say I got that. And you claim it. And you know, the truth is, you really believe the doctor more than you do God. <laughs> Some of us do. We believe what we see more than we do when it comes to the word. That pain hits you and you believe it. It's, it's real. But how many know you got to say what the word is saying? You can't be moved by your... And I know it, I know it, Pastor but it, 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 I feel it. I'm going to tell you something. It's a lot of stuff I feel and it hurts. <laughs> But, but you know what? If I went by what I feel, amen, man, man, I'll be tore up. I know that's right. <laughs> but I don't walk by my emotions. I don't walk by my feelings. I, I, I don't walk by what, what, what other people do to me. I got to stand on the word of God. How many know you're going to have to do the same thing? You're going to have to get some control and some discipline over your mind. The Bible said the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. How many know you can, you can get your spirit under control? The Bible said he that don't know how, and I'm going to paraphrase it. The Bible said if a man that don't know how to control his spirit, it's like a city without walls. Jesus, Jesus. How many know you got to get some control, not just over your spirit, but over your emotions? Because as soon as something comes, guess what's going to happen? You're going to fall apart. I mean, most Christian people live, in their, live their life falling apart. Yeah. Some hit them. No, I just don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> and I'm not being funny. Mm -mm. I'm being truthful. But, but, but we're not supposed to live that way. The scripture says a double-minded man is what? James is unstable in all his way. People that's uh, emotionally unstable, amen, every time some come up, they, they, they run and hide. Mm -hmm. And I got to come, and somebody got to pray you out that cave mm -hmm. that you went in and hid. When the truth is, church, you have authority. You have power. Amen. No good, Pastor Lord. Let, let's read this right here. Whereby are given to us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers. Partakers. The, the word partaker, that means to participate, take part in, right? Mm -hmm. So God said, what's on me? I want you to take part. That's my nature. The same nature I have, I'm going to put it on you. So we're supposed to be walking around in God's nature, God's presence. Yeah, yeah, don't hear me. Let's open my Bibles to Matthews. Let's go back to Matthews. Pastor Bond, that's one thing to say. But how are we going to do it? You got the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Right. It's in you. So, you know, you better receive it. Amen. Because we do. We're supposed to be walking in authority. We're supposed to be walking in power. Did, did I say Matthew's chapter? Did I say 12 and 35? Yeah. Okay. Let's go ahead. And I, the reason I was reading that chapter in Peter, because it talked about the nature of God. 
And how many know you can't bear these fruits if you don't have God's spirit, right. which brings his nature? Right. It is not a word. Okay, let's read this. We're gonna read this and we're gonna move on. Uh, a good man out of the out of the good treasures of the heart mm. bring forth good things. That's right. And an evil man out of the evil treasures bring forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof. In the day of judgment. Listen to this. For by thy words are thou justified. By thy words thou shalt be justified. And by thy words thou shalt be condemned. How many know you got to say the right thing? Amen. What does it mean to be justified? Did, did Jesus justify us? He's declared us innocent. He made us righteous. So if you're not saying the right things about yourself, who you are, and what Jesus did for you, then you're going to live under condemnation, you're going to live under fear, you're going to live under anxiety and stress, and you will never walk in the nature of God. But because your words, your, he said your words going to condemn you or justify you. And he said in the last day, in judgment, you're going to give account for everything that come out of your mouth. I mean, the words have power. Proverbs 11, what, Proverbs 18, 21. The power of life and death is where? In the tongue. We said before the word power in the Hebrew is direction. It's not strength. It's not power. But it's direction. How many know that your words going to, amen, amen, when you open your mouth and speak, amen, your, your words going to lead you and guide you to, to, amen, to, to, amen, either to blessings or curse. Amen. Curses. Amen. So you got to make sure you're speaking the right thing if you want to go the right direction. If you say negative stuff, you're gonna go. You're gonna go. You're gonna go to destruction. Mm -hmm. But if you speak in the word of God, you're gonna walk in. You're gonna walk in. The, you're gonna walk in peace. You're gonna walk in the blessings of the Lord. Amen. So, so we got to make sure that we're speaking the right thing. A lot of us are condemned to living in fear because we're saying the wrong things. He said, "Yo, your words gonna either justify you, or they gonna condemn." They're going to send us here to death for life. So make sure that you're saying the right things. But listen, he said a good man. So if, you, if, you, if you're a good man, good things ought to come out your heart. Amen. You, you can't tell me you're good and you spend all day gossiping, talking about people, and then behind their back. Amen. Ch -ch Church, and we, we shouldn't live that way because that, that's, not, that's, not, that, that's not the nature of God. That's, right. mm -hmm. that's not good, is it? And I know people don't like you to dig down into the dirt and dig stuff up. But, but the truth is, we got to deal with where things at. Because, you know, you asked me why I would say that. Because church folk can be some of the most gossiping people. Yeah. <laughs> but we got to make sure that we're showing love. Because what you show, you're going to reap. That's right. That's the truth. That, that's what we got to understand. The devil know if you sow it, you're going to reap it. If you sow hatred, you're going to reap hatred. Yeah. If you sow kindness, you're going to reap, reap, reap kindness. And some people wonder, God, why am I having such a hard time? Because you ain't showing love. You ain't treating nobody right. That's you right. being mean. Right. You, you being mean, but you expect another folk to be nice. That's true. Mm -hmm. So what you sow, you're going to reap. Yes. You know? So make sure you're sowing the right thing. That's why I try to treat everybody right. Hey Amen. I, I try not to get no attitude, but if not necessary, I, I, sometimes I got to fight for the not to, because some folks make you want to get attitude. But but in the end, I make sure that I say the right thing. Right. Right. <laughs> hey, it might be something else circulating in the heart, but but I put a stop to it. I said no, no. And people can make you man. Let's be real. But but yeah. but God, the Paul said the love of God restrains me. Even when sometimes I get frustrated and want to say some negative stuff, yeah. when people make me mad, amen, the love of God said, Victor, you can't go that way. That's right. I have to rebuke it and take authority, take authority over it. Because, I, 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 you know, I come to realize that if I saw it, I'm going to reap it. Mm -hmm. and, and you know what? Sometimes things come up in your life and you ain't have to sow nothing. Mm -hmm. Some things come to test you. It's true. It's true. So I wanted you to think that every time something comes your way, you did something wrong or you sold something negative. But but you just make sure that, that, that you're sowing the right thing. Amen. Amen. Because you want to reap it, right? Yeah. And how many know that when you plant a seed, you ain't going to get one. You ain't going to just get one kernel of corn if you plant corn. You're going to get a whole stock of corn. Mm -hmm. Amen. So it's going to increase. Once it's planted, it increases. Mm -hmm. So that's why I try to sow love. Mm -hmm. 
That's why I try to love my enemies. That's why I pray for those that despitefully use me. Why? Because I know if I sow it, I'm going to get it back. That's right. So what you want back? So, so love. Let, let's jump up here. Uh -uh, and I'm going to read this. And we're going to move on. I'm going to go back. Let's go up to verse 33 for just a minute. I want to read this. Either make the tree good and its fruit good. Make them one or the other. And I said this last week. Sweet and bitter water. James said sweet and bitter water can't come out the same fountain. Have anybody ever drunk some of that well water down in the country? Mm -hmm. Boy, that's some nasty water for me, Jesus. <laughs> I used to have to drink it, though, down my grandmother. I said, no, I can't wait to get back to Tuscaloosa and get them down here. But after a while, you get used to it. Mm -hmm. and then you, you have, you know, but, but Jesus said, he said, listen, he said, he said, sweet and bitter water can't come out the same time. He said, and he just said, yeah, either make it good or bad. Mm -hmm. You can't sit around and talk bad and I said, but I'm a good person. <laughs> Pastor, I really just didn't mean that, Pastor. Well, they just... It just came out like this. Make the tree good or evil. Ain't no in between. Because out of the abundance of the heart and our speech, mm -hmm. you one or the other. That's right. It's simple. But you got to put the right things in your heart if the right things going to come out. That's why you got to put the word in there. You got to put it in there. When hatred try to come up, that word will rise up in me. And I go, wow, I can't do that. Mm -hmm. I can't do that. Mm -hmm. And you know, sometimes, hold it. sometimes when I, when I want to get angry, I think about how much Jesus loved me when I was messing up. Mm -hmm. And I have to tell myself, well, I got to forgive them. Mm -hmm. If Jesus forgave me, why can't I forgive somebody That's else? Right. That's true. That's right. And let me tell you something. There's nothing anybody going to ever do to you in this world that you can't forgive them for. That's, That's right. right. That's right. That's true. Because Jesus loved you when you was messing up, when I was messing up. Yeah, and if we're going to be blessed, we got to learn to forgive. Mm -hmm. That's right. Amen? Amen. Because you ain't going to have no good attitude. Mm -hmm. People walking around, let, listen to this. People walking around right now living in the past. Living in past hurt, past disappointments. I mean, no God don't want us to do that. No. Guess what? I mean, you got to man up. You know? Hey, yeah. God, it's just the truth. You got to man up. I made a mistake. It happened, Jesus. But you know what? I'm going to start over again right here where I messed up. Amen. And, and whatever it is I created, I got to deal with. I mean, no, Abraham did that. Go listen to his wife and go have a baby by, by what's her name, by uh, Hagar. He listened to her voice. And when he, could, when, when he had Ishmael, it caused a whole lot of problems. Because that's what's happening over in the Middle East. Uh, Ishmael and Isaac, Israel and the Arabs, they're fighting over the same, they're fighting over, they, what they call this, they all fight over their birthright. Now, both of the children of Abraham. But Ishmael came out of disobedience. And guess what? Wow, that, that's something. Think about this. Even though Abraham messed up, God must have really loved Abraham. Even though Abraham messed up, God still blessed his mistake. Just like he told Isaac, a nation going to come out of you. He told Ishmael, a nation is going to come out of you. But he said, Ishmael, and, it, and look, up the, look up his name, Ishmael. It means a wild ass. And, and God told him, your head will be for battle. Mm -hmm. And them folk blood fight. You think they're doing some of the stuff they do now? It's been prophesied that their hands going to be for war. It ain't going to be no peace with them. You know, anytime you can put a bomb on you and kill you, and it's, you, you got some problems. But right, anyway, Pastor Mark, let's, let's go ahead and get out of here. Either make the tree good, or its fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt, and his fruit corrupt. For the, listen to this. L listen to this carefully. 
For the tree is known. By his fruit. That's right. You know by what you got. Not what you say. Don't tell me I'm a good person. But all this other stuff coming up out of you. Because right. I ain't going to know you by what you think you are. I'm going to know you by what's coming out your mouth. And then your attitude. And then he said. He said you're going to know them by their fruit. You know, and I always say this. And you know when I pray sometimes. Sister Holy, you know what I tell God. I, and this is me. I'm, 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 I'm open. I said, Lord, you know what I need help with? Help me. That's right. It's one thing that I try not to do is deceive myself. Right. Like, you know, you all this and all that. And, and I said, Lord, you know what? I, you, you, you know what I, I, I mean, you know what I need, so I need you to help me in this area. I repent. Yeah. I ask you to strengthen yeah. me, Lord. Yeah. Amen. And, 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 and that's where we got to be and say, say, Lord, you know what? I, I, I see my faults. Even though you can cover them all, Lord, I see, I know what I need to change, and I pray that God change me. I don't walk off and go, hey, I'm perfect. Ain't nothing wrong with me. I'm, I'm fine. All the rest of y'all messed up. <laughs> And you know that's what some people do. They, and, and, you know, they come in and they they stand up behind the pulpit and like act like they so perfect. Ain't none of us perfect. We're being perfected. We're we're growing every day, right? We should be growing. So if you're growing every day, you shouldn't stay the same, just That's why I want to say why church folk get get mad at me when I talk about change. Because if you're really growing, you got to change. That's right. Got to change. Yes. And anything that's not growing, dying. Did y'all know that? Yeah. If you're not growing, you're dying. No. You stay. Amen. Eventually, you're going to die. So I want to grow. Amen. And, and you know what that means? That means, Victor, you got to face the harsh reality that you might mess up in the morning, later on today. But Lord, help me. And that's what I pray the Holy Spirit will help. And that's one of the prayers I pray. Holy Spirit, transform me. Yes. Help me to walk in righteousness. Have you know the Holy Spirit, the Bible called him the administration of righteousness. So when he moves on the inside of you, it's his job to work righteousness in you. Yes. And so you know what I stopped doing? I quit praying to Jesus and telling him to make me righteous. Because Jesus said, I'm leaving. But I'm going to send the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. He's going to teach you. He's going to guide you into all truth. So I start praying, Holy Spirit, help me to walk in righteousness. Help me. And I start seeing my life change. Some of the stuff that I used to do, I don't do no more. I'm always growing every day, getting better and better every day. And that's always my prayer. Holy Spirit, help me. Because if it's his administration, if it's his job, but I'm a, Jesus made me righteous, but the Holy Spirit is still going to be the one to carry out the orders and the administration of Jesus. Yes, 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 yes. That's his job. Mm -hmm. Trump, the president, is his administration, but he got a whole group of people carrying out his administration. Whatever he wants, they're doing it. And he proved that if they don't do it, he find them. Quick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, 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 but I'm trying to get you to see something. See, Jesus provided righteousness, but it's the job of the Holy Spirit to carry out the administration of righteousness in our lives. So without the Holy Spirit, Drenda, he can't carry out the administration of Jesus, which is the righteousness that has been given to us. So we got to put a demand on the Holy Spirit Amen. Paul says, stir up the gift that's within. Amen. You got to stir up that gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Because when you stir him up, he'll cause righteousness to come forth. Let's go to Isaiah. This is where we're going to close it. We, we're going home. And I'm, I'm going to do this right quick. Ain't hey, reading no more scriptures. <laughs> At least that I know of. Right? Let's go to Isaiah 6. And three. Isaiah 61 and 3. Oh. And I'm just going to read that because I don't, don't want to waste any more time. I don't want to go through all this. 
But, but let's go to verse 3. To appoint to them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beautiful ashes, the oil of joyful mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Listen to this part. That they may be called trees of righteousness, planted of the Lord, that he might be glorified. How many know that we're supposed to be trees? of righteousness planted of the Lord. Israel, y'all know the nation of Israel, uh, their, their symbol is the, is the uh, olive tree. It's also the, it's the olive tree. It's, 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 it's also the, um, what was that Jesus came to? Fig tree. There are different trees that represent the nation of Israel. And I said before, y'all remember when Jesus opened the blind man's eyes, the Bible said he saw men walking around like trees. And then I guess Jesus prayed for him a second time, but he saw clearly. But how many know that we're supposed to be trees of righteousness? Planted of the Lord. So when people see us, they ought to, they, amen, they, they ought to see the righteousness of God. Let's read this. He said, I point to them that mourn in Zion. Let me know if you're mourning God to give you peace. Mm -hmm. To appoint to them that mourn in Zion. Zion represents the church, just in case you didn't know it. To give unto them beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Let me know that when weights and pressure set up on you. And I tell you this all the time. You are, that, that's why you need to get in the presence of God. He said, in my presence is what? Fullness of joy. Peace everlasting. So when we get in the presence of God, it, it'll lift the burden. It'll destroy the yoke. So that's why we got to take time to praise and to worship and, then, and to lift him up. When I get in, sometimes when I get under pressure, I just, sometimes I just go in there and I put on your song. Mm -hmm. right. And I'll just worship. Mm -hmm. That's right. I worship and I speak the word. Yes. yes. And before you know it, that seed that somebody planted gone. Why? Because in his presence is the fullness of joy. You know, and I like this, that they may be called trees of righteousness, planted of the Lord, that he may be glorified. How many know that when people see God's righteousness, that it's going to glorify God? And that's really what the, about the church bearing fruit is so that people can see God on the inside of us. And Jesus said, he said, you're going to know them. You can tell me anything, but he said, you're going to know them by their fruit. So when people come to you, what are they going to find? Are they going to find peace? Are they going to find joy? Are they going to find love? And I don't know about y'all, but that's what, that's what I want people to find when they find me. They ain't going to never catch me depressed and sad and mean. I just don't feel good today. Don't bother me. I said, come on, let me cast that demon at you. Since you ain't feeling good today. We don't supposed to be caught up in our emotions. I don't feel good. Like, what, what if you got to come praying to Jesus? Lord, you come know, praying to Jesus. He said, I thought, he said, girl, what you going? I just don't want to be bothered. You quit bothering me with the same old stuff every day. I'm tired of you. Every morning you get up and every night you pray, you act with the same thing over and over. <laughs> just, just leave me alone. <laughs> Ooh, Lord. But y'all know we do that to one another? Yeah. And Jimmy don't just play with her. But, 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 but you know, but, but what I'm trying to get you to see is this, is that we, we're supposed to love one another unconditionally. That's right. When you ain't feeling good, get your emotions in check. That's right. <laughs> and quit telling folk off. <laughs> <Ouch>. <laughs> because that's not love. Yeah. And we all can be, you know, the one said this, and I'm glad the one said that because it, 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 it's staying in my spirit. But we, we, we realize, too, that some of us have been in this thing a little longer than others. And, 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 and if it's something that you're just learning, it takes time for you to grow into it. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's 
Right. You know, you got to get used to speaking the word. That's right. Think about it. That's we right. weren't in traditional church. We weren't taught to fight with the word. That's we just accepted, prayed, mm -hmm. and prayed them prayers. Oh, Lord, come by here, go home, <laughs> go to the club, go party, get drunk, get high, do whatever else we want to do. But never took authority over the devil. Uh-uh. No, no, no. Sure mm -hmm. did. Just oh, church out. Go on to church. Yeah. And, and, and ain't nothing happened. Hey, can, can I read this and then we'll go home? <laughs> For I say unto you, except your righteousness exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, ye shall, in, listen to this, you shall in no case enter, listen to this, into the kingdom of heaven. Wow. So our righteousness got to exceed that of the Pharisees. Y'all know what the Pharisees and the Sadducees, Jesus said this about them. He said they come into the church. We see them at church all the time. <laughs> you ever see them, them, them officers in the church? They come, they pray loud. They, 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 they in competition praying. That's true. <laughs> all right. That's the see who can pray the best prayer. Yeah. Pray the I, I, I know. I grew up in there. I, I seen them. They, they, they pray. Boy, you so pray today. <laughs> they in competition. Jesus said we can't be like the Pharisees. He said they come, they stand before, stand before men that they may be seen. Yo, for they must speaking and yeah. and for all their eloquent words. Yep. Oh, <laughs> Jesus told me he said, and, and, and I'm gonna make it bow. Jesus, Jesus, told, Jesus pretty much called them vipers. Snakes. Who oh, tells about Jesus? But people say I want to walk with Jesus. I wish I, I wish I could have walked with Jesus. And if you was, if you were religious, Jesus would probably be calling you a snake. He even called them dogs in some parts of the Bible. That, that's mean, isn't it? But but you know what he was talking? He was addressing. He was addressing that spirit. Yeah, that's right. Sure. You know, he said you stand in the door, block everybody from coming in. Just so you can be seen. Mm -hmm. And he says, he accepts your love, exceed that of the Pharisees. He said, you shall no wise enter the kingdom of heaven. That's right. That's right. I mean, we don't just love because you treat me right. That's, that's, that, that's human love. Yes, you know, the love of God is, is, is the same. Every day, it's consistency. It, it, it don't change. That human love, drink. As long as I take you out to dinner for each, mm -hmm. buy you what you want. Soon as the fire break out, <laughs> get on out, go on, boy. I ain't got time to fool yeah. with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do something you don't like. You want to cuss me out? You want to fuck? See, that, that, that's human love. Mm -hmm. that, that's what we call a love hate relationship. But the love of God says this, guess what? I forgive you. Mm -hmm. That's right. Amen. And it's the same. It don't change. It's not emotional. Even though love may be a feeling, have feelings, you know, but, but it's not really emotional. He said we're supposed to love one another according to knowledge. Not according to what you feel. When I know how I'm supposed to treat you, that's the way I'm supposed to treat you. Mm -hmm. Not based on how I feel this morning. <laughs> this morning. And people are amazing. They, they tickle me. Wow. I ain't going to even go there. But anyway, <laughs> love. Barren fruit. So we got to spend time with Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. If we're going to bear these fruits, if we're going to walk in the Holy Spirit. That's right. And when the Lord spoke to me, he said, he said, Victor, he said, if the church is not bearing fruit, he said, I can't use it. How are you going to help somebody else if you don't have anything to give? You know? I know people die. People dying. People need help. And I'm saying that all the time. I said, Lord, thank you. Let, just, just let me be a blessing. Whoever you, you know, you, 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 you put in my hand, let me be able to, 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 to give them a word of encouragement. Amen. Amen. 
And see, that's why I keep telling y'all, we got to get to that place where we are operating in the gifts of the Spirit. That's because, right. Because it can be somebody walking down the street, somebody walking, and, and, and the Holy Spirit 